Thank you for your introduction. I'm talking about Open Web Globe SDK. It is an open source implementation of a 3D engine focusing on virtual globes. Here are some screenshots of the current version. You see there are nice images, proprietary images. Here you see something a little bit hidden, the copyright string, and that's our biggest issue. We can't cover the whole planet with non-open data. And for that, we are very thankful to use OpenStreetMap data and can cover really the whole planet and, and use that as a base data set too. Um, I can't show videos right now, but you can check the videos on the openwebglobe.org webpage. There are also some other information and uh, lots of videos. Um, the Open Web Globe runs in a browser, in a, co a WebGL compatible browser like the Firefox or Chrome, Safari, etc. And um, we can check this current version on openwebglobe.org slash alpha if you have a compatible browser. This demo currently only runs with Firefox 5 or Firefox 4. It's also running on Chrome, but we, we want to limit it to one browser right now to test the performance and all things. And if you have enough data for the beta version, we will open it for all browsers. What's the Open Web Globe technology? It's in two parts. We have basically two branches. One branch is the um, WebGL branch I told before. Um, the big advantage of this branch is it runs on all operating systems supporting a compatible browser. So we only have to write one code and it really runs on all operating systems. I was very surprised when I tried it for the first time. I developed under Windows, then I switched to Mac OS, developed a little bit there, I switched to Linux, developed there a little bit, and it really works really great. So we don't have to code special things for the operating system. And on the other side, we, we have a C++ version with bindings, so we can use this SDK for Python, for C Sharp and Windows only, or Visual Basic if you like this, or Java and C++. And we use OpenGL or OpenGL ES for the embedded version. But right now, because our resources are limited, we focus on the WebGL version. The C++ version will come out later this year as open source. We use the MIT license, so it's really open for all things and even commercial use. One of the most important things is accuracy. We, we can't just use the sphere, for example, to display our data. We had some applications with augmented reality or mixed reality, and for these applications, if you hold your device, for example, and you want to use the uh, magnetometer or other things, you have to uh, have the best reference system. And for that, we use the, um, the WGS84 ellipsoid and also the global geoid model. If you, for example, if you use the sphere as a, as a 3D object, you will have real problems in, in the range of 60 or more meters in some areas. So you really have to use the WGS84 ellipsoid for that. And for elevation data, that's one of the most important things in, in a virtual globe. For elevation data, we support grid-based approaches and a TIN approach. The big advantage of the TIN is, of course, we don't use lots of data and also we, we, we can display this really nice. If you compare this grid and, and TIN um, of, of the same data set, you see there is not much difference and we save more than 80% of, of memory. Of course, you have to tile this data. So um, we, we use tiles like the open street map tile system for elevation data and we produce these tiles for example, for one country like Switzerland, for a small country like Switzerland, we use about um, 10 million tiles in a resolution of 25 meters. And one big advantage if we use the TIN approach is that we have interactive quality. Besides the level of detail, we, we can use this approach for mobile devices with low polygon counts 
and they can use it for a really uh, high-end computing system and have a big quality. Another thing is if you use the tin, if you look at the horizon of the worst quality and if you look at the horizon of the best quality, you don't really see a big difference. So uh, I think it's, it's really pretty nice how it looks today with, with this tin approach. And, and then, of course, is the SDK. Um, you want to program. It's, it's an SDK because you want to create your own applications. And one big thing is I want this SDK to be used by non-programmers. So every, everyone who doesn't really uh, program every day should use, should be able to, to write some lines of code and then have a nice globe. And my goal was to have four lines of code. And after four lines of code, you really see a virtual globe. In these really small Hello World applications, we first create a render window or render context and specify the size, dimension, and then in the second line, we actually create the globe and it, a globe object is returned. Then we add an image layer and in the fourth line of code, we add a elevation layer and you have a globe. You can navigate with a standard navigation. You can zoom in, zoom out, everything a virtual globe has. And this virtual globe is object-oriented, but with functions. We have around 300 functions in total, encapsulated in objects. But it's, it's not really object-oriented, but it's object-oriented in, in, in the way that we can create objects from functions. So the uh, most important object is the context object. Um, there is, it's actually the render engine. For example, OpenGL 2.3.4.x or OpenGL ES render context or a Direct 3D if you like Windows. But right now, Direct 3D is not supported at the moment. Or of course, the WebGL context. One or one of the most important um, render engines is the non engine or a null engine. So you can create a virtual globe, for example, for a query um, as a query engine. For example, if you, if you want to know the, the height of a point at a, at a location, you can just start this as a query engine and you get the result back. And if you want to display graphics, you create a scene object. There you can choose if you want a 3D ellipsoid or if you want a flat earth representation or a 2D map. And inside the scene object, you place a camera, so you can update the location, position, orientation. You can specify uh, the field of view and many things. And then the most important object is the world object, where you can place some image layers, elevation layers, poi layers, billboard layers, or 3D objects, or a voxel layer where you can um, display point clouds. Now I, I'm going to, sh I, I told you before, I want an example in four lines of code. Unfortunately, if you use JavaScript, there is some little overhead from, from a script, including scripts and, and uh, creating the canvas. But let me show you this small example. First, you specify, um, you include the open web globe JavaScript, and then you, you start the script. I, I use main because I'm a C++ programmer. And then I create this context from a canvas. This canvas is, is, a, is the WebGL canvas, actually a HTML5 canvas object. And then I create a globe object from this previously created canvas. I say I want it full screen. Then I use the OpenStreetMap tile um, server or my own tile server and specify the service type. It's OpenStreetMap. Here we use three tile servers. You can use as many tile servers as, as you like. And then that's all. And if you count the lines of code again, you come four lines of code for, the, for creating this globe. Of course, a globe alone is not enough. You want to add some content. For example, you want to add some geometry or, or poise. And creating poise is very easy too. You just create a poi layer from the globe object you retrieved before. You give them this layer a name, for example, airports. 
You ca if you want, you can create some custom styles. I'm not going to this. It's, it's very simple. You can, for example, you have to specify the font. You can specify the size of the font. Or for the icon style, you define the size of the icon, etc. And then you define the POI itself. A POI, um, it's optional, has an optional icon, has a text, and a position, including elevation. And then you create this POI, and it is on the globe. And you can repeat this for 10,000 more POIs, etc., and then you have 10,000 POIs on the globe. Uh, I think I think the interface is pretty easy to use, and and yeah. Of course, there are some more advanced objects. Um, it's only the half truth that it's simple. If for the non-programmers, it's a really simple way to to create this, and for advanced users, it's also possible to use that virtual globe. So the most complex um, object is the geometry object because 3D geometry is very difficult in a in a certain way, especially in the geo world. Um, the most Common object is, the, is a mesh object where you have surfaces and uh, position data, normal data, possibly color data, etc. And there you specify this 3D object. There are also some um, other special object like point object or line objects. And of course, the material. You want textures added to your object and so on. But it's not that complicated as it looks. Uh, you can create a small object in only a few lines of JSON code. And some other objects is the POI object I, I said before. There is some waypoint object. We actually renamed this to billboard object, where you can um, add some um, HTML5 content. I didn't say this before. Here you see, for example, a movie running in such a billboard object. And of course, a text object where you can have multi-language text and translations of text. And now the part of the data processing, of course, um, it's, it's the most difficult part of all of this because processing data is, is very CPU consuming. And recently we acquired um, a storage system with 120 terabyte of storage and uh, it has 1.4 gigabyte per second sequential read and 850 megabyte per second sequential write. And it's a from Dell, the system. It's, we are quite happy with it so far. And we also have some very small, uh, it's actually it's a HPC systems uh, with, with some, uh, with, with only 48 cores. So we have four compute nodes and one head node and the compute nodes have 48 cores. We didn't want to have one very large system for that because we want that some companies can afford this system. The system today costs around 100,000 euro. It's still too much, of course. But I think in two or three years, the system will be half the price or even less. So for us, it's very important that our algorithms are fully parallel and we are really fast. Our current results are towards 400 tiles per second um, data processing. We, we created, um, for example, we created a, a data set from all Switzerland in 25 centimeter per pixel. It's around 30 million of tiles, and we used under uh, around 45 hours for this. So I think it's, it's quite a good result so far for such a cheap system. I say cheap because it's affordable. For, for smaller, bigger companies, but of course it's still, of course it's still too expensive for for um, casual uh, at home. You don't want this system, of course. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's it's not that bad. Uh, okay, we we use around 2,000 watt, uh, but it's not that bad. Um, our data processing workflow is quite easy and fully parallel, of course. So first program is to create a layer, a new layer. Then we add data to the layer. We, in general, we have many mosaic files or some things. And if you have elevation data, you have to triangulate this. If not, you just don't do anything. And then you resample or build all level of detail. And of course, in the process, you need an update and a deployment. And the deployment, of course, is the most difficult thing. Um, we have 
our storage system and now we want to bring this data from our storage system to another service, for example, in, a, in the cloud, in an Amazon cloud or whatever. And then we have maybe um, 50 million tiles and copying 50 million tiles is not that fast. So we have, a, a, right now we, we create tar files with, with, with 48 cores. Every core creates a tar archive and writes this new, and then we can copy this big tar archive and then extract it again. It's not the best solution, but right now the only solution. And of course, all this data processing uh, application framework is open source too, and also in the MIT license. Now, how do we use OpenStreetMap data? We have to uh, render custom tiles uh, because we really want background to be transparent like here. Here we have um, the background, the normal background with forests and all things you can have in background. And for example, the streets, we want to have only the streets and this is transparent in the PNG. And of course, you can combine these two and you get um, a regular open street map tile you're used to. And this way we can combine data set. For example, we can combine auto photos with this um, open street map data or we can combine it using hill shading. Here is our two screenshots. I don't know if you can see it. Here is uh, open street map data with, with um, hill shading. So you see there are some shadows. It's this hill shading layer was created with, with SRTM data and here we see um, OpenStreetMap data over um, Landsat data. So I'm coming to the end. The open web globe. Okay, I do it slowly. <laughs> you have lots of time. <laughs> um, the code is currently available on GitHub and we use the Clojure compiler uh, for the JavaScript. That's a, a compiler from, from Google to optimize JavaScript code. Uh, it, it's pretty uh, neat if, if you use it uh, correctly. <laughs> um, you, can, you have to specify data types for every um, variable in JavaScript and then you can compile this. You get warnings if you do something bad. You get errors if you do something even more bad. And yeah, so you can create compiled JavaScript code. Of course, uh, if, if I compare the JavaScript version with the C++ version, um, the JavaScript version is about 10 times slower than the C++ version. And uh, I'm sure the browsers will, will become better in future. And the big advantage, of course, is you can just start your browser and, and see the 3D scene if you have a compatible browser. But over time, we will have more and more um, compatible browsers. You can download a pre-compiled, I say pre-compiled JavaScript SDK from GitHub, and I will, I will give you the address later. And it's available together with some tutorials. I think the tutorials are a good start. You, first tutorial is you just draw some text. The second tutorial is you, you just split the texture on the screen so it's no globe yet. And the third tutorial actually creates a globe. It's similar to this four lines of code demo I uh, showed you earlier. And then the fourth uh, example is um, loads display the globe with OSM data. And then I go uh, further on with picking so you can click on, a, on the Terra and you retrieve the coordinate. And then the uh, next example is um, uh, creating poise and uh, then some 3D geometry and then playing around with the camera so you can update positions or you can have multiple cameras and switch them around. And the last um, example only works with the WebGL version, of course, is the canvas as a billboard. You can use a HTML5 canvas object and display this as a billboard, for example, um, you can run the video uh, in HTML5 canvas and you see this video in the billboard. Or you can do many other things, just draw with your HTML5 code and you display it in the globe. And we are working now on, uh, uh, in, the, in the WebGL version, we are currently um, implementing point cloud streaming. We already did this in the C++ version, but because um, 
uh, JavaScript is much slower. We have to take some special considerations for this and re-implement it with some new approaches. So uh, the big goal is to have open street map data. You zoom in to the globe, and then, then you see the point cloud or voxel approach streaming to you, and, and you see this, this such scenes. We made experiments. For example, this, this um, data set here uses around 200 million points. And of course, we don't have limitations in, in the number of points. We use a special voxel approach that um, thins out this point cloud and makes some level of details and displays it slowly on the globe or fast if you have a fast internet connection. Thank you very much. Um, I want to say here the GitHub uh, is just open web globe. If you go to GitHub and you can also follow us on Twitter or you can follow me on, on Google Plus if you already have an account there. And thank you very much. Uh, thanks to the previous speaker who left us more than enough time to answer questions now. Uh, I read that the coffee break will be at half past ten, so I hope that there are more than enough questions to answer now. 3D is a very complex uh, uh, thing you can do, so please raise your hands. <laughs> So for, as you said, uh, JavaScript is slower uh, than you would like. If you have any specific things that are slow in, in JavaScript that you would like to do and where you have good test cases to show that it's slow, please give them to us at Mozilla. We would love to optimize for things like that because we love to have WebGL uh, being used there. <laughs> That was more a statement than a question, I think. <laughs> okay, going on to the next. Hello. Uh, are you using the advanced compilation mode of the Clojure compiler? So is all the code annotated? Okay, great. Well, it seems that everything is clear about 3D. Uh, a personal question of me. The, the uh, Coordinate system, the projection is WGS84, I assume. Okay. Woo. No more questions? Well, then I, I can let you out too early. Don't do anything bad out there. Uh, then let's say again thank you to Martin for his very nice talk and view on the globe thing.